Hi, my name is Flip Krabbendam. I'm an architect specialized in co-housing. I will show you the first co-housing project that I designed in the 70s in cooperation with the future residents. It was a great adventure because co-housing hardly existed in those days. Our aim was to create a new kind of housing in which families can live in community, avoiding the isolation of the individual household. What kind of a social and spatial structure would be suitable to integrate the community? The project is named Centraal Wonen after the National Organization for Co-Housing and it is located in Delft in the Netherlands. In 1975 we organized a design weekend where all future residents of the time were invited. We tried to imagine the project by playing with little foam blocks. Four pre-designs arose from this weekend and it was up to me to integrate these pre-designs. What we tried to design was a sequence of four scale levels. Individual households, groups, clusters and the project as a whole. To avoid isolation of the individual households, we tried to integrate these households in the context of a group that was formed around the kitchen for 8 to 10 residents. But now we had to avoid isolation of the groups. So we invented a new context on a higher scale level, the so-called cluster which is a unit for 30 to 35 residents and it has facilities such as a laundry, bicycle storage, workshop and garden. Clusters could be integrated in a higher scale level in the common facilities for all 100 to 120 residents. That consists of a bar, a room for yoga and physio physiotherapy and a workshop and also common vegetable gardens. Here you can recognize the three cluster gardens and the common area in the middle. To prevent the project as a whole from isolation, we situated the common facilities next to the central area, open to the outside world, so people from the neighborhood could easily enter these facilities. When the group consisted of about 75 people, we decided to divide the group into four clusters. Now each cluster group could start to modify their own cluster in the building. To facilitate the de decision making process and to show the future inhabitants the different sizes and possibilities, we built a real scale model of a group kitchen, corridors and private living rooms. The model was built at the Faculty of Architecture in the University of Delft. In this image we recognize the private rooms, the group kitchens, the clusters and the common facilities. The decisions of the future residents had led to irregularities and differences in the plan. For instance, some but not all private rooms are enlarged. Some group kitchens are basic and square, others are enlarged and rectangular. And what we cannot see here, sometimes attics are added, sometimes not. To avoid isolation of the groups, residents have, within the clusters, access to more than one kitchen. The next step was the design of the façade. We designed it in a way that it could be altered easily by the residents. We thought that it was a right for residents to be able to alter their own façade according to their own taste. However, this did not work in the practice. So we decided to color the façade in a playful way. And this is how the project looks like from the outside and from the inside. Not only the design process together with future residents was an adventure, living in the project was still, was and still is quite an experience with numerous contacts, planned and unplanned, cheerful and serious. I learned a lot about spatial and social structures and about facilities that can support these structures. Now, let's take a tour to the project of Centraal Wonen in Delft. Centraal Wonen is the Dutch term to refer to co-housing. Co-housing 
is a type of intentional community of private houses or rooms clustered around shared spaces. In November 2016, researchers from the working group Collaborative Housing of the European Network for Housing Research visited this housing project. Flip Cravendam, the architect and resident of the building, guided their visit. We joined them to explore this interesting example of co-housing. Flip gave us an introduction to the project in the living room of his building. He talked about the challenges of realizing the project, how the community participated in the design, and about the experience of living there. Yeah, that's a good question, because when people ask me, ask us, um, how about your privacy? In, you're always in the group, how about your privacy? And then I said, how about your privacy in a nuclear family? Mm-hmm. End of the conversation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, and we had, we had quite a lot of children also. Yeah. There were even families that went, moved in here because of their children. Yeah. They said, it's so nice for children to live in a community. And the children have their own uh, room? Pretty room, and Their own room, but not their own and house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Different kitchen with now seven persons in every kitchen. And if somebody leaves, we invite somebody else to live here. Okay. And we choose the person. We are normally we have a list. You can via internet you can put yourself on a list. And you write a little story about yourself. After the conversation, one of the residents gave us a tour of her building and explained how the different groups and clusters use the common and private areas. It's, it's for four groups. So okay. there are two groups here mm-hmm. and two groups over there. Okay, and they can meet up there. And then we can all meet yes. up here, which is really nice in summer because we yeah. can have barbecues mm-hmm. and so, mm-hmm. and we can, yeah, just mm-hmm. light a fire outside and, um, yeah, meet each other. So that's really nice. And every uh, living group has their own way of doing things, you know? They do it different than, than we do. And, uh, it's nice to see. The living room and kitchen are used by a group of eight persons. They organize themselves to cook, buy groceries, and clean the place. All furnishings in this area are collectively owned. For instance, the furniture was bought by the group from a shared fund. All groups who live in the same building share the laundry machines and the storage area for bikes. Now we move into the more private area of the building, which is shared by a cluster of three to four persons. Our guide tells us that she rents two rooms. In one room, she has a small table and a kitchenette, while in the other room, she has her bed. Both rooms are connected by a staircase and a hall with the toilets is located. She shares the toilet and hall with her upstairs neighbor. If you could redesign something here, mm-hmm. you have an idea probably. What would it be? Oh, I don't have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there is always something that I would like to change that if I could. So if you could, what would you think? Change? Well, seriously, I never thought of it like that, and you know why? Because you can always change. You can always uh, move to another room. Because there are so many differences. Mm. And like I said, unless it's vacant. Unless it's vacant, but sometimes in life you have to wait. It's a very nice way of, of living. And but maybe um, I am the type of person who just likes it. Not everybody likes to to, to meet his neighbors or her or her may, neighbors, you know? when you wake up and get your breakfast. Yeah, I, I do like it when I bake my egg. That, and uh, it, yeah, somebody from my group is just asking me, oh, okay, what are you, are you going to do today? You know, for me, it's for the long term. And okay. I knew that when I came in because I've always liked living in groups. But there's many people, okay. there's many people, uh, young people, yeah, who say it's a part of my life and after three years, okay, I'll move along and get my own home. That's true. Central Bonen seems to be a successful example of a community-led housing initiative. Proof of this is the long history of the project, the current high demand to live here, and the satisfaction of the residents. Co-housing projects like this one 
consider high levels of user participation in the design, but also in the management of the buildings. They are inspired by solidarity, mutual help, and the value of a more sustainable way of living, promoting a blend and a balance between privacy and community.